<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Edmonds Racing Preview Show. It's a huge weekend for the stable, two feature race runners over the weekend in Alpine Edge and the Vows and Trent's joining us to talk through it all. Toby's up at Rockhampton with Alpine and uh, how are you mate? Exciting times, big weekend of action and good to see the winning run continued with uh, your best bet. Yes. Cordyceps Miracle getting the chockey. Very short as we know but still one absorbed a lot of pressure as you seem to have to do here at the poly track at the moment um, and kicked away and was too good. It wasn't a very good race uh, to be fair but he won with good authority so hopefully now that I think Mitch Manis said it was a thousand days between wins or he something. He did say that. Fair yeah. while. Uh, hopefully after that the second one comes along in a couple of weeks time we won't have to wait another thousand days. <laughs> Alright well let's get into the feature race runners Alpine Edge Headed up to Rocky earlier on this week. Toby's with him uh, along for the journey. Barry draw Wednesday. Uh, how's he settled in? How's, how did the travel go? And how's, uh, how's the reports from the road? Yeah, all good. Um, he's pretty experienced travelling. He's been to Sydney and Melbourne and, and whatnot. So um, he's a pretty experienced traveller. Never leaves an oat and that's continued. So he's settled in beautifully up there. Drew really nicely in barrier eight. He'll come out of five, I think it is. And... Um, with emergencies out, so that's fantastic to be honest. Um, good speed, one or two drawn below him, a couple drawn out deep that will roll, which um, sets up well for, for our horse. And um, I suppose we have had concerns about just the thousand into the 1300, but the majority of the horses are in the same position anyway, aren't they? So. Um, we've done everything we can to have him right. He went out to Bow Desert on Anzac Day, had a good gallop with the vows, um, pulled up super from that, so all well. And really looking forward to Sunday. Um, track should suit him, good speed in the race. I think he's at his best when there is um, a good amount of speed on. And um, let's hope we get a result. Well, he's a good, good each way price, isn't he? But sounds like there's a, there's a bit of confidence around um, around him. I suppose, like, confident that we've got him right and, yep. and well. Um, going into big races like this, confidence probably not the not the word you'd use. I suppose hopeful that you're going to get a result. Um, confident that we've done everything in our power to have him cherry ripe. Yep. Oh, well, exciting weekend for Connections, the Lucky Clover team. No doubt the, uh, the team are all pumped um, to get uh, our point edge uh, on the track there. Okay, you mentioned the track work gallop at, at Bow Desert. The Vows was uh, was on the inside. He lines up looking for six straight wins. He lines up in the Queensland Guineas. Uh, it's been an enormous uh, run of uh, yeah, wins for him, I guess. And it's just crazy. Uh, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it, when you talk about six wins heading into a group two. And he's one of the chances, uh, one of the key contenders in, in that race too. Unfortunately, uh, got shafted with the usual feature race barrier draw for us. Uh, 16 of 16. Probably just ride him steady anyway um, at this stage without having had a huge look at it just yet. Um, you go back to that win two starts back, ending his prep last time where he carried the big weight, ridden steady and then got up the fence and really let rip. He smacked him that day. Um, I would think we'll just leave it to Jimmy and see, see where he ends up, but his work has been typical for him. He's never flashed, but thought worked up nicely on Tuesday out at Bowie with Alpine Edge and um, you know Jimmy's riding in good form I think he gets the best out of this horse he's two from two on him and um, it's you know it looks like just another natural progression for him obviously Kovalika put the riding on the wall first up in the South Pacific Classic down um, at Ramwick on the last day of the championships he's got to come up here and do it um, interesting race He's in really good form, and as I think I said last week, bit of a fork in the road moment for him. Saturday, if he was to win and, and win convincingly, what do we do? Do we keep him in three-year-old grade and, and rise in journey, or do we freshen up? And I think it's seven weeks between tomorrow and the Stradbroke, whether we go a Fred Best into a Stradbroke um, remains to be seen. However, it'd be a good problem to have Would if, be. He, if he was able to win. Yeah, okay. And obviously interesting, as you said, it's a bit of a, uh, a good test for him against some of these, I mentioned Kovalika and some of the Southern yep. Raiders where um, you'll know where he stands after Saturday, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And and the sort of the depth of the field doesn't end there. Even the Kiwi horse, um, Waitak, that ran 
behind him the other day. If you watched the last, or up the running, he didn't have a great deal of luck and sort of got squeezed out at a vital time. So it's probably one to watch as well, rising in journey and drawing kind. But um, our guy's in, in good form and it's a darn strong race to be fair. Yep, yep, good test for him. And uh, another excited bunch of owners, uh, the On Fire Racing team and partners there. Another horse with lots of owners, so great to see uh, sharing the love. And they're all coming down too, so it's, um, it's fantastic. Uh, from Darwin... Um, Adelaide, you name it, they're all going to be there. So, no, no doubt they'll have a great day at the races, win, lose or draw. Uh, all right, closer to home, Saturday, across the road, uh, the three runners set to step out on the poly. Uh, Deep Mystique and Call Me Marilyn, um, we touched on them last week. They mm -hmm. were set to go to Coffs Harbour on Monday. That meeting didn't uh, eventuate, nope. so, so there's a backup plan here. Deep Mystique was a debut winner last prep, and um, it was actually Toby's tip last week from that Coffs Harbour meeting. Um, it has to step up to it's a class two this one on Saturday. I think I know what he'll be tipping again. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's got 52 kilos after Bailey's claim. He's riding well, drawn beautifully. Barrier one, an, an abundance of early speed. Uh, she has this filly. If you really want to give her a bit of a scoot along, um, there wouldn't be anything that could go with her. So, with 52 kilos, even though she's probably going to be a little bit soft the last 100 meters or so, you'd have to think that she'd be on speed for a long way. Give a good kick with that light weight, and I think class will take her a long way. Um, I do expect her to improve with the run, but would be disappointed if she wasn't fighting to finish out okay. with that soft, with soft draw, on speed bias of the poly and 52 kilos. It all sort of tick, 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 oh, basically. Sounds like you might be tipping <laughs> her as well. You made a pretty good case there, so. Um, Sounds like one to keep an eye on, uh, on the Poly Deep Mystique for the Archer Park team there. Uh, Call Me Marilyn and Astern Magic are the other two runners lining up in the Maiden Handicap. And Call Me Marilyn uh, was entered for 1,200 last week, mm -hmm. so this is 1,100. Is that maybe not, not as well suited over the 1,100 or won't matter I second? Don't, I don't think it will really matter. I think we touched on it um, before she was supposed to run the other day. Didn't have a great deal of luck first up graft and has had a bit of time between runs. Um, walking across the road, she'll be on speed somewhere and can hopefully keep going. I think what she's shown at home, she hasn't quite grasped that on race day yet, but she's nearly ready to win. Um, and the other fella, Astern Magic, it's a shame we're gonna have to run them against each other. They're both drawn soft, but it looks a lovely race for him too. I thought he was unlucky not to win on debut at the Sunshine Coast when he was pretty brand new and a little bit underdone. And he'll it was a good run, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a super run, and he'll continue to improve as we step him out over a little bit further but it looks like it's a, a really nice race for him and if they can get down the middle of the track and build a bit of momentum he'll be really standing home late so two sort of really good each way chances um, she's probably a little bit more ready made in the fact that she'll be closer in the run and has had a bit of experience where he won't be as close as her in the run and he'll be hitting the line hard so um, watch for them both late. I, I would expect them to both be in the finish somewhere, okay. um, providing that they can make a bit of ground. Yep, and, and Michael Carlton to ride a Magic too, so that's a pretty handy yep. acquisition. He's obviously normally would be in town on a Saturday, but Correct. with the carnival in full swing, he's obviously riding at the coast. And he's, he's a nice, kind rider, so as I just said, he'll be midfield, hopefully one off the fence, and um, can get home. I think when Damien Thornton trialled him here, the Stern Magic, he actually trialled quite well. Race day is a different story, obviously, but it was good to see him hit the line on that occasion and then um, continue to power through. So going really well, he's ready to win. Okay, sounds like three uh, good chances uh, lining up on the home track. Uh, the Rocky support card on Sunday alongside our point edge is Tioga Pass uh, in the Bill and Dye Eastern colours yes, there. And uh, obviously the horses uh, had a few trials heading into yep. this. And yep. uh, what are we expecting first up? Well, we set him for this meeting because of Bill and Di's obvious ties to the so Rockhampton Central Jockey Club. Queens, yeah. yeah, so um, would have loved to have seen him drawn just that touch softer. Mm. Um, but from that barrier, I would tip we're going around in the 65, 1200 rather than the three-year-old race um, at, at this stage. From that barrier, I reckon we would just ride him for comfort. He's got enough time to get a bit of cover um, and then expose late and... I would have been a lot more confident had he drawn sort of two to five rather than just out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, would have been able to posse up just behind speed and then pop out at the right time. Hopefully not getting too far back. Uh, Going to be hitting the line hard, but just people think that the 600 metre straight at Rocky lends 
to back markers because you've got a stack of time, 600 metres and whatnot. But often what happens there is the front runners can get away from you and you're left with too much to do. So hopefully that doesn't happen. He can get a cart into the race, peel off their back sort of at the furlong and, and get them down late. He's in good form. He looks super. I wouldn't read too much into that last trial as we just spoke about off camera. Um, there was no blinkers on him that day and he's a dead set blinker horse every day of the week. So um, needs them desperately, keeps them on on race day and should race well. And his two trials before that were, uh, were, were better, weren't they? So Particularly the, more, more the one with the blinkers on the second one at, out at Bowie, it was good. So um, you take him on face value of that rather than the last one. Okay, um, very good. Well, that's the Rocky program. And then we move on to, to round out the weekend, the extended uh, long weekend, another public holiday uh, for the May Day. Dar Darcy Andermill lines up at Ipswich on Monday in a benchmark 68. I have to have a look at that. He was extremely disappointing first up when we thought he'd race well and he's drawn horribly, so um, would like to probably just save him for when he draws softer, and um, need to see him do it, especially given he had a beautiful run in transit the other day and then weakened out of it, so um, he might have to wait. Okay, maybe wait for yes. another day with him. All right, well, they're the runners. You've given um, a bit, bit of a push for, for a few there, so. Well, we've drawn well all weekend, and, and sort of, well, besides the vows, obviously. <laughs> you know, the big race. Um, you know, and, and they're in their right races, but oh, you kick it off nice and early at the Gold Coast, deep mystique. I, I think, you know, as I said, pretty much laid it all down, didn't I? On speed bias here, soft, tra uh, you know, soft barrier, 52 kilos. It all bodes well, and she's a quick filly. They're going to have their t uh, work cut out trying to get it past her. Okay, very good. And we'll uh, we'll hear from Toby. We'll throw up his tip on the screen as well. <laughs> Obviously, he's come down a peg in the the tally. Uh, I'm tipping dollar forty four. Last week, you, you, <laughs> you've inched up there. You're uh, you're just crawling your way back to yes. uh, into the black. Yes, correct. So hopefully, there's a bit of value about the filly, and um, yeah, well, even if he tips her, then uh, yeah, and yeah, she wins. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, she's like. She's probably, after carnival time, I think she could get to three-year-old Saturday grade, which um, would be the goal for her. So um, she's really progressive and just sort of sticks out for mine. So that's that's us. Yeah, very good. Good push for her. Anything from around the grounds while we, uh, Toby will no doubt throw out a few more tips just because he's full of confidence oh, at the moment. Oh, wow, yeah, he's a tipping machine. <laughs> um, victory stakes, hard race. Um, I'm going to stick with the tip that I had in the Oakley Plate, the King of Sparta. I think hot speed, even though Prince of Boom was impressive the other day, um, hopefully it regresses a bit. King of Sparta over the top. Okay. Private Eye, nothing? No. No. Hard to go grand finals and then come back off them and then keep going again, True. I think. I could be wrong, but yeah. I'm just going sort of fresh legs. Okay. All right, well, thank you uh, for your time and little insights there on the weekend runners, and uh, it's an exciting weekend for everyone, so uh, good luck. Have a great weekend, everyone. Go the two better than readies. <laughs>